Elijah Gordon McAdoo. Born September 21st, 1888. Granddad McAdoo came to this country and homesteaded. And his first house, it, see the, the, the rules of homesteading is that you had to improve your land that you were buying from the state of Texas at a, at a good price. You had to make an improvement on that land. So he needed a place to live. So what he did, he's, he found a little side of a hill and he dug a, a trench in the side of the hill, put a roof on that trench, and put a door, it's called a dugout. Well, he, he stayed there for his two years and all this time he's courting my grandmother and with who he had proposed to on the top of McAdoo Peak over here in December of 1908. He was 18 or 19 and she was, she was 14 or 15. Well, her mother wasn't too proud of, wasn't gonna let him get married until she was 18 years old. And they waited and got married at that time. But his first house, uh, when he got, got married, he went and he found a home that had been had been a, a house at a, at a railroad stop near Sarah Blanca. And what they did is they separ they took apart the house, numbered the panels, put it on a wagon, took it to their place about 20 miles, and reassembled the house. Well, the family that had bought it, granddad bought their property and uh, their house from them, and he decided that he was gonna move it. So they jacked the house up. It's, it's a four room house, and instead of tearing it apart, they jacked it up, and they backed two wagons, two flatbed wagons, pulled by horses, and took that house from it where they'd been rebuilt to his land which was eight miles away. I used part of the lumber materials from that old house for this house that we built here. Granddad, Granddad had a, a, a desire and always a plan on how to do things. He put together this ranch, this roughly 40,000 acre ranch over a period of years. And granddad, granddad absolutely was not afraid to work. It's just, Just his dedication and his vision was just absolutely unbelievable. When I was nine years old, granddad and I were over here feeding cattle, I guess. And at this particular spot, he would always we'd roll the window down and set his rifle up and he, he had this rock that he shot at, shot at it all the time. We call it Granddad's Rock. It's about 350 yards out there and he'd shoot from here and he'd say, one of these days I'm gonna knock that rock down. <laughs> Looking at it from right here, it's still up. And I've been shooting at it for 50 years myself. But anyway, Granddad and I were here and he was pointing out the McAdoo Peak where he had proposed to my grandmother in December of 08. And I just, 
I just fell in love with this place. We call it Sand Hollow. And I said, you know, Granddad, one of these days, I'm gonna build a house right here. Well, there's no electricity and there's no water and it's a long ways from, and he looked at his probably ignorant nine-year-old grandson and he, he probably paused to think about what it was doing. Well, I hope he's smiling because granddad, I built the house here. Took me, uh, took me a while, but you've got a house that, where you used to park and shoot at your rock out on the side of the hill. It's always a good thing to have a direction from family. And I guess that's one of the neatest things that that old man gave me was never ever sell yourself short. You can always, if you've got a plan and you're willing to work, you can get just about anything in the world done. And his ranch, how could a, a kid that didn't have a penny in his pocket come up with a plan to build this beautiful place that he had. 40,000 acres. Been, it's been split up and given to the grandchildren and his, his children. But still, it's what a legacy, what a blessing that this can be passed down.